For your viewing pleasure, this broadcast of the Municipal Council Meeting of Alpena is made possible by the funding provided by the City of Alpena. Thank you for your generosity. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Alpena City Council meeting October 17th, 2016. Call the roll, please. Johnson? Here. Nielsen? Here. Nowak? Here. Sexton? Here. Waldora? Here. Vice Pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, any modif modifications to the agenda this evening? Approval of the minutes, regular session of October 3rd, 2016, and special session of October 6, 2016. I have one for the special session on October 6th, uh, which is um, Tammy Sumbrick's Bates was uh, noted as a Green Township Supervisor, and Karen will change that to Green Township Trustee. Anything other than that? Okay, citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items are allowed five minutes each to address your concerns. Uh, if you'd like to do so, please come to the podium and state your name and address for our records. This is the only time during the meeting you're allowed to address council. Consent agenda this evening, there's A, bills to be allowed in the amount of $576,850.63. B is one council appointment to the Recreation Advisory Board for a three-year term expiring October 1st, 2019 is Patricia Mowat. C is Keith Timms' request for a noise variance from 10 to 11 p.m. on October 29th, 2016 for a Halloween party at 604 Long Lake Avenue. Will we approve the consent agenda as presented? Second. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walagora? Right. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Down to announcements. A is that Halloween trick-or-treat hours are from 5.30 to 7.30 on Monday, October 31st, 2016. And B is for city residents. Ballots are available at City Hall for absentee voting for the November 8th election, uh, general election. Anything? Uh, we have almost 600 absentee voters already and just want to remind people that if you're disabled out of town the day of the election or you're 60 year old or you can come into City Hall or we can send you a ballot and you do not have to go to the polls that day you can vote absentee. Thank you Karen. Now the report of officers. A is City Treasurer's quarterly financial report July 1st 2016 to September 30th 2016. Through the first quarter of 16-17, we should be at about 25% of our budget year. Revenue is at 45% for the general fund. And of course, we always tend to be high at this time because we've gotten most of our property taxes in. <coughs> we collected about 91% of those already. Expenses are at 26%, which is just slightly over the target. Some of this is due to large capital projects that we completed in the first quarter. For example, I think the bypass trail had a few things like that. The salary wage line items are over budget for almost all departments. Um, Parks and Rec, Cemetery, and DPW have summer help, so that explains why most of their expenses or the higher amount is in the summer. And then police and fire are due to overtime, especially the summer events for the police where they have the 4th of July and, and events like that that call them out for, the, for more overtime. Um, an area to keep our eyes on that Greg and I talked about today is that our cash invest and, and investments that's the last page of your green financial. Our uh, cash this year compared to the same time frame as the last two years is quite a bit lower, significantly lower. 
and part of that is because we did use some of our fund balance and we don't have the exact amount yet but we'll have that soon the auditors have everything now and they just need to pull it together so we might come close to what we budgeted which was about two hundred and twenty five thousand but it looks like it might be about two hundred and seventy thousand yeah. out of our fund balance so mm -hmm. we'll see you know we there's still maybe some audit adjustments and things like that so that that is one of the reasons and then the capital and then we kind of looked at that and we're just going to really have to keep an eye on it we have received no personal property reimbursement yet so we'll see how that goes remember we were concerned about that we just weren't sure and they <coughs> promised 100 percent reimbursement now they're talking maybe this year we'll get 100 percent, but maybe not next year they're just looking at the essential services now that they give us that as 100 percent. so it's just a it's just a guessing game there's no time frame on when they would decide that is there it, they change the law every year and we still aren't sure we've taken some webinars and things like that and it's very confusing so they we'll, we'll just see as we go treasury who oversees it when they explain it they don't know most of the time what they're completely talking about they're they're confused they're they're in webinars and they're as confused as the people listening to them trying to get information so it's it's a, just a guessing game one of the worst written set of laws that you could have if we do end up taking that 270 approximately thousand dollars out of fund balance like we had budgeted it would leave us with 25 percent fund balance to start this fiscal year so we're right about there that's where we're at right now so when we budget this year we're going to have to really take a good look at everything we have gotten a lot of big capital projects done which is nothing glamorous but like public safety got the roof almost done we got one more section on that and mike's been working hard kilishevsky on the v i call them vabs or vabs and then here we got the tuck point done so lots of things getting done those are coming out of construction funds though not the general fund does anybody have any questions thank you again for the uh, report can we get a receipt on that sure so moved. Second. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walagora? Right. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, insurance RFP recommendation. <coughs> Excuse me. In August of this year, the city solicited RFPs for health, vision, dental, life, and long term disability insurance and associated services for the calendar year of 2017. The bids were due September 19th and a total of six bids or proposals uh, and associated services were received from the following agencies. Alpena Agency, obviously here in Alpena, Lappin Agency of Alpena, Hub International out of Grand Rapids, Franklin Benefit Solutions FBS out of Grand Blank, uh, Brown and Brown Insurance out of Saginaw and National Benefit Service Center out of Maitland, Florida. Uh, an internal insurance review committee consisting of city employees, which included myself, Kathy Himes, uh, the Human Resource, Resources Administrator, Brett Miller from the Fire EMS, Eric Camp Police, Lucille Bray, the Departmental Clerical, and Garth Grokey of DPW uh, reviewed the proposals and then narrowed it down to four that we actually interviewed or had them come in to make presentations. And those were Alpena Agency, Lappin Agency, Hub International, and FBS. Uh, the instructions in the RP package stated <laughs> that different vendors could be awarded specific insurances, not necessarily it was an all or nothing. It could be broken up. Following the interviews, the committee met to discuss the pros and cons of each vendor and to make a final recommendation for council. Additionally, the members agreed on the health insurance plans to recommend for the coming year. In the end, since all the vendors utilized Blue Cross Blue Shield for their health, including vision plans, the costs were the same from all vendors for the same plans. And most also used the same carrier options for the non-health insurance quotes. Consequently, the selection of an agent came down to service, and the final unanimous recommendation of the committee 
was to split the insurance award as follows. For the uh, BCBS Health and Vision Insurance, it would be Hubby International out of Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. And for uh, dental, which would be Delta Dental, and also Dearborn National for Life and Long-Term Disability, we will utilize Alpena Agency. The committee was impressed with the many services from HUB, both at the human resources level as well as individual employee assistance. Included, all these included without additional fees. These include in-house legal counsel to assist staff with a myriad of federal regulations, compliance support, and report generation, and a strong philosophy of looking ahead and thinking outside the box for ways to provide quality plans while reducing costs. <clears throat> Although our agent, Alpina Agency, uh, has provided us with very reliable and timely service, it could not match that offered by HUB without additional cost to the city. The company is national with its headquarters in Chicago and actually international in scope, but it does have basically what are independent state affiliates. And the one in uh, Michigan is out of Grand Rapids, has 140 Michigan-based employees, which provide a thorough understanding of the health insurance market here in Michigan. So they're very familiar with how things work here. In regard to our health insurance plans, we opted to terminate our current BCBS Community Blue policies effective January 1st of 2017. The premium renewal increase would have been approximately 2.2 to 2.8 percent. We were fortunate to have a very slight decrease in premiums for this current calendar year, which allowed us to continue for another year with the plans that we've had for the last several. With the 2017 increases, we revisited the BCBS Simply Blue plans, which include two high deductible health savings account plans. After careful review and consideration, it was decided that the city would offer four Simply Blue plans, two traditional and two HSA. And they're outlined in terms of the premiums, uh, what the city share is, what the um, uh, employee share, and then city's contributions into either a flexible savings account or a uh, health savings account. The trend both in Michigan and nationally is to move toward HSA plans. To encourage use of the plans, the city will provide a significant contribution to each active employee's health savings account during this first year, while encouraging employees to make their own pre-tax contributions to their individual HSA as well. Even with these contributions, the reduced premiums will result in a net $71,000 to $78,000 annual savings to the city for calendar year 2017. It was understood that as the initial savings to the city is eaten away by inevitable future plan cost increases, the amount of the city contribution will likely decrease, basically just trying to hold costs at this level if we can. It is hoped that by that time, employees will have developed the practice of personally investing in their HSAs, which will allow them to grow while providing a necessary cushion when major expenditures do arise. For younger and or healthy employees who utilize medical services infrequently each year, it is an ex excellent mechanism to save tax-free for future medical costs in a manner similar but with greater tax advantages than our retirement savings plan. We also have flexible savings accounts that are offered which are similar to accounts that we've used in the past and these will be available to employees choosing the traditional plans. Um, Basically, with an HSA, what goes in is tax-free. As long as it's not medical, it goes out tax-free. So it's, it's a, basically a very much of a win-win. Each of the new dental, life, and long-term disability insurance plans will provide equal or better coverage than the city's current plan at a reduced cost. Total annual savings for these policies are estimated at approximately $46,000. So the total potential savings including the health for next year could, could be in the range and we're projecting somewhere close to 120,000. So after some of the bad news, or at least concerns that Karen put out, there's a little bit hopefully of good news of where we at least will have, look at some savings. Um, 
The dental was huge, the amount of savings. We, we dropped from about 112 to 69,000 a year, so it was huge. So as city manager and on behalf of the Employee Insurance Review Committee, we recommend the following council actions. There are three of them. First is to award the contract to serve as the city's health and vision insurance agent to Hub International of Grand Rapids, Michigan, utilizing Blue Cross Blue Shield as the health and vision provider. Two, award the contract to Alpena Agency as the city's dental, life, and long-term disability insurance agent utilizing the insurance providers listed previously in this memo. And third, to approve the use of the BCBS Simply Blue Health and Vision Plans as outlined in the attached spreadsheet and described earlier for the upcoming calendar year. Despite the fact that the city is saving money by converting to the Simply Blue traditional and high deductible HSA model for the coming year, the city will be paying more than 80% of the total annual cost of providing health benefits to its employees. This is due to the fact that the city is paying 80% of the employees' premiums, but will also be contributing to either an employee's HSA or FSA account. In order to comply with the regulatory provisions of PA 152, the city will be required to approve by resolution the opt-out option from the statute, which we have done, I think, the last four years. This will permit the city to legally pay more than 80% of the total health insurance costs while still saving us money. The opt-out request is the next item on the agenda, so assuming you approve this, we will then uh, be asking for consideration of that as well. In conclusion, I would like to thank HR Director or Administrator Kathy Himes for all her work in finalizing the RFP, coordinating all the vendors, and obtaining answers to numerous questions. I would also like to thank each of the city employees who served on the Insurance Review Committee. Without their participation and valuable input, the RFP review process would have been far slower, more cumbersome, and far less certain in regard to the final outcome. So a grateful well done to each of them individually and as a group. <coughs> and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer those. Are there there's at least uh, two other members of the committee? in the audience. Is there any uh, benefit to doing anything longer term with either of these companies? I'm assuming uh, from reading this that it's going to be a yearly review? Uh, there was, uh, like on dental, they actually offered a two-year fixed. Okay. But when I did the calculation, it was basically if we did just the one year, and then we took what they had a set for two years, we would have to have an 8.8% increase in our rates the second year to match that. If we had only a 4% increase this next year, then we would be actually spending more by locking in for two years. Um, Kathy did do some checking, and I think it was 3 4% was kind of an average for Delta. So we decided it was better to just to go on a year-to-year -year. I mean, it's not to say they couldn't suddenly hit us with 10, but it's not been their history. And most of the others have been, I can't remember, was the, he the life for more than one year? Yes. I think that one may have been, the life and long term may have been for two years okay. on that. Just yep. as an FYI, since I've been here, we have not had increases in our life. That's just not a typical annual increase unless they see something significant that concerns them. But I've been here for seven and a half years and we have not received an increase yet. Oh. It's just that with the new one, the rates are lower at a lower rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've had good reviews. We <coughs> can't talk to some who have utilized Lincoln and they've been very happy. Um, of course, health, that changes every year. You, they're not going to lock in for more than the one year. Is it typical for this to be pieced out with different providers? Or? Yeah, because right now, um, I don't, I don't, does, does Alpine Agency handle all of our life? That's just we handle directly with no, or that or not? No, they handle life, long-term disability, and we'll cross the shield, and then okay. we have no direct rep for mm -hmm. our dental. And on the 80-20 the split, I understand why we would be over. Is that 
how temporary is that? Is that through the life of the contracts, and then maybe we'll look at that, or um, is it really just looking at it for this one year? This is four year, and this is what the unions, everybody understood, mm -hmm. that they do vary. Well, basically, I, I don't see us changing the 80-20 on the premiums. It would just be if we do any other contributions. And no matter what that is, if we have any contribution at all, we're going to have to opt out in order to technically make those, you know, legal. Even if we are able to hold our own and save money, uh, it's still necessary because of the way the law is written. Anything else? I don't have any questions. Uh, certainly appreciate the involvement of uh, the uh, department uh, representatives. You don't necessarily have to do that, I don't think. So it was pretty nice for uh, for you guys to involve them and get them um, I, I guess in the process. I, um, just one other thing. I, I of course distributed. You know what the the rates in the end again. These were all rounded off to the nearest dollar, so final rates may be 50 cents higher or lower, unless something happens and we suddenly get a different rate, in which case I said I would notify everybody, but I'm not expecting that. But I've, uh, we've sent two uh, our unions from, or, or representatives from the different departments that and the benefits at a glance, so they can now distribute them to our, our employees um, and I've offered to attend any meetings if they would like to have me to kind of explain it. And also our new uh, rep from Hub uh, has, uh, will be up here and will be here. She has other uh, clients up here and so will come here to uh, go over and, and answer any questions. Uh, we also have our Blue Cross rep is still here in town. We can bring uh, Ariel, she can come in at any time to also address any questions of the uh, employees. So we feel we have a good you know, grasp with, with the right people to answer all the questions. Enrollment will be during next month uh, to get everybody enrolled in whatever plan they want. That gives time in for the agent to get everything in place and get all the payroll deductions and especially if people go into HSAs to set those up and everything else. So January 1, uh, hopefully everything will be ready to go. And you want these ad addressed individually? Well, you well you could approve all three of them if, if you're so inclined that you agree to all of them. You could agree to all three or make a motion for all three of the. Uh, They're separate. I, I don't know. Do you you don't have an issue with if we want to <coughs> address them all at the same time? I certainly don't. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's okay with Bill and somebody wants to move mm -hmm. that, do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, you can do them all as one. Okay. Yeah. So someone would like to. <laughs> okay. I move we award the contract to uh, serve as City's Health Insurance Vision to Hub International of Grand Rapids, utilizing Blue Cross Blue Shield as the health and vision provider. I award the contract to Alpena Agency uh, as the City's Dental Life Long-Term Disability Insurance Agent and approve the use of BCBS Simply Blue Health Vision as outlined in the in uh, the memo. Second. Second. Sexton? Yes. Wallagor? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Noak? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Did you didn't do the third Did you do the third recommendation? Yeah, he yep. did. He mentioned yeah, did. it. Yeah. Oh, did you yeah, he did say the third one. Yep. He Nobody was listening. In his motion. He stopped short of attached oh, spreadsheet. And said, yeah. yep. I said in the memo. <coughs> he said as in the memo. As in the memo. <coughs> I could amend that if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> but you read the next one. I'll I would have just said as written. <laughs> as written. Um, next up is C, Public Act 152, Health Insurance Premium Opt-out. Okay, each of the last four years, council has concurred with the request from the city manager to opt out of the PA 152 health insurance cost options, which are one of two that are there. One is the default and the other is the, the secondary. The default being the maximum local government premium contri 
contribution for single person, two person, and family coverage, also known as the hard cap, where the state tells you this is how much uh, the city can pay for each of those plans. This is the default option. If no other action is taken, you must do that. The other is local governing body contribution limited to 80% of the cost of the medical plan, regardless of type, and this requires a majority vote. Instead, the council, by a required two-thirds vote, which is re what's required to opt out, each time it has been unanimous, agreed to opt out of both of these options. This action allowed administrative employees to contribute an amount consistent with the contributions previously negotiated with the city's five bargaining units. Back in uh, 2013, during negotiations, each of the unions agreed with management on a phased-in approach to attaining a 20% contribution for his or her health insurance plan. Even though it had been determined that the 80-20 co-share was the best option for both the city and the employees, if it was implemented all at once, it could be a major, and it would have been a major financial burden on certain segments of the city workforce. So during the 2000 negotiations, each of the five unions and uh, staff recommended and presented a proposal for the four-year phase-in towards the 20 percent, and they all agreed to that. And as of July 1st of this year, we've reached the 80-20. So that phase-in is now complete. As previously discussed, and you acted upon, so it's no longer assumed, <laughs> By council, the, the city has converted from the BCBS Community Blue Health Insurance Plans to the BCBS Simply Blue Plans, both traditional and high deductible HSA. Overall, this will save the city money over the course of the year. However, with the city payments into the employee's HSA accounts, or even the FSA, either one, the total contribution by the city toward employee health benefits will exceed the 80% cap mandated by the Act. Consequently, at this time, I would recommend that Council once again approve the city opting out of PA 152 for the calendar year 2017. With the passage of PA 252 of 2014, the city must approve annually its intent to opt out, but it is no longer necessary to file the vote with the Department of Treasury. We just simply keep a record of it here, so if they ever ask. Uh, based upon the review of plan options and their impact on the city employee co-share, <laughs> Staff will determine whether future opt-outs by council are required. Uh, if not, the council will still need, at least my understanding, uh, to vote annually on the 80-20. So that's my recommendation, just to opt out again. Different reason, but just instead yes. of one. Right. Different reason, Mr. I move we opt out of um, PA-152. For calendar year for calendar year 2017. Second. Walbora. Aye. Johnson. Yes. Nielsen. Yes. Nowak. Yes. Sexton. Yes. Thank you, Derek. Next up, our bids. <coughs> First one is the mobile intensive care unit ambulance. <coughs> Good evening, Council. Good evening, Chief. Uh, tonight we have bids for the mobile intensive care unit ambulance, which replaces or actually augments the uh, 2011 unit, which now has so uh, 200 some thousand miles on it, and is in poor condition. Uh, five bids were received, uh, ranging from 189.024 to 225.15. Uh, the CIP budget of the amount is 200,000, uh, so some of the bids are under, which is good. Uh, although there is still ancillary equipment that needs to be purchased out of that as well as <coughs> the radios and a deer guard that weren't budgeted into the truck itself. We'll still be under budget after making those purchases. Uh, our last truck came from Mercy Sales and Mark. They were the second lowest bidder this time, but we had some trouble with that one. So had they been low, we would have had to really look at that. Uh, but they weren't. The low bid is uh, an AEV ambulance from uh, Roland Specialty Vehicle Products or RSVP in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, we have a 2015 or 14 rig from AEV already, and it worked out really well, no problems, at 189.024. Therefore, uh, it would be my recommendation the Council award the bid for the purchase of the Type 3 ambulance to the lowest responsible bidder, RSDP Incorporated, in the amount of 189.024.00. Thank you. 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 Th
just a quick question for you. Absolutely. And I, I don't expect you to know exactly, but I mean, they're pretty big price tags. How much of that <coughs> price is the equipment that comes with it versus just the actual <coughs> vehicle? 40,000 of it is the cat and loading system. Um, several thousand is probably the lights, but other than that, it doesn't come with any medical equipment. That's the vehicle itself. The Ford chassis and then the aluminum box and cabinetry that's built onto it. Unfortunately, the cot and loading system really has jacked up the prices, uh, yeah. essentially 50000 in the last year. And everyone across the country is having that same problem, but it is the minimum standard now. As you'll recall, when we started phasing those in a few years ago, we were trying to be closer to the front of the pack. Now we're kind of at the end of the pack. Everybody mm -hmm. has to now. Uh, but the good news is that as far as the cotton loading systems, we haven't had a single lifting or back injury since we started implementing them. Mm -hmm. And all three first line units are now equipped. So that's that's very good, very good news. That ultimately saves the city money. Mm -hmm. for sure. yep. well, a lot of it, absolutely. We've had employees in the past that, that got injured and, and were actually medically retired cost of fortune. So if we can avoid that, not only is it good business for the city, it certainly is good for the employee as well. Um, how much do you anticipate it would take to get the equipment that you need, the medical equipment? Uh, the deer guard's about $700. The radio, the radio's in waiting for a quote. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, but it will not go over budget. We can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> but we will have <coughs> what we need. Isn't that right, Karen? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to sell pencils on the side. Pencils, no problem, sir. We'll do that. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Oh, you have more? Yep. One, one other question. Uh, the old unit. Uh, is that part of the trade-in? Is it uh, being no, sold off? No, the old unit is still serviceable. It's, okay. it's not nearly in the shape it was a few years ago, but it's okay. still serviceable, and that will be the backup MICU. Okay. Uh, we frequently run into situations now where we have two requests at the same time. And we don't want to use county rigs on, on city runs. We need city-owned rigs for city runs. We did uh, purchase two uh, reserve units uh, to get us through periods when we had vehicles down in past years. Uh, 103 is a 94, and 110, or 108 rather, is a 91. And most likely one of those two will be retired when the new unit goes in service. Uh, surely newer rigs are a good thing, but we need, we need dependable ones. And, and that's one of the main keys to this. With critical care patients especially, we can't have breakdowns. That's just not an option. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Well, I'm not the believer of the subject, but can you take some of the equipment from the ones that you plan to retire and beef up the newer ones, or will it work to put old equipment Not in? the radio equipment. Uh, and the transfer cars don't have deer guards. Only the long-distance cars do because they cost money. Um, but as far as the medical equipment, yes, we will. We'll move all the medical equipment from one rig to another. Okay. So, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Action on that. <coughs> I move we award the bid to RSV Incorporated in the amount of one hundred eighty-nine thousand of twenty-four. Second. <coughs> Johnson. Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walagora? Okay. And next up, public safety building variable air volume replacement and controls. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick update. Karen had on, on some of those items, uh, projects that we've got going. Uh, City Hall is uh, about 90% complete. They still have a little bit more ceiling and uh, uh, some tuck pointing they need to do, and they're, they're due to be back this week. Um, the water treatment plant project is going very well with the heating down there. Um, the Prairie Park's going to get a new furnace in. I've already put in some pre-applications to DTE Energy. We've already been approved for some incentive monies to come back. And so a lot of the projects are, are moving forward, you know, really well, and I'm really pleased with how they're going. So. Um, on September 26, 2016, the city received an open bids for the public safety VAV replacement and controls. Bids were posted on the city a volcano website with two local bids received. Bids included five alternatives, uh, ranged from $84,894 to $140,202. The base bid and alter alternative M4 are the required items to complete the VAV replacement on the first floor. 
and review of both bids, base bid plus alternative M4, prices range from 58,666, I wish that number was a little different, to $110,912. We budgeted $48,000 for the 2016-2017 year to complete this project. We also required design assistance from Spicer Engineer that was approved at $4,000 making the total project of 62,666. The hmm. scope of the project is to remove the existing VAV units on the first floor, install the new VAVs, including hot water coils, valves, and control system. The existing VAV units are no longer, are original with the building, with most of them not working properly or at all. Parts are difficult to find and, and are expensive when they are found. This results in additional use of energy and higher utility bills, comfort issues, and overall building performance. As both bids put us over budget, I met with Court Treasurer Finance Director Karen Hebert to review how many still may fund the project. We looked at other public safety projects budgeted for this year. We have budgeted $40,000 to replace the flat roof areas on the building and anticipate bids to come in around $38,000. We have a $4,000 balance in the Public Safety Construction Fund and anticipate $2,000 in incentive dollars, uh, which total to be $8,000. The VAV project is still short $6,666. <laughs> Rather than take the balance from the fund balance, I anticipate there will be a decent amount of money left from each of the Public Safety Department's building maintenance budget. Any shortage at that time could come from the roof project, not slated to be completed until spring of 2017. It is my recommendation as the Assistant City Building Official that we award Lakeshore Plumbing and Heating the contract for the Public Safety VAV project at a price of $58,666. At the completion of the project, we will review the funds available to complete the roof repair project and, if necessary, request funds from the fund balance. Um, the fund balance is the very last place that I anticipate to look for the money. I believe that uh, the, the building maintenance dollars that are currently budgeted for the 2016-2017 will be significantly lower because we're not going to have the major repairs that we've seen over the past several years for, um, for the building repairs. And the bulk of that's been um, you know, the heating system, the VAV, you know, the VAVs. We've got a lot of that fixed now. And so we continue to move forward. We considered options of only putting partial of the first floor VAVs in. And I don't want to do a, you know, I don't want to do half the job. If we're working on the first floor, I, I anticipate to complete that whole first floor. Anything uh, that stood up, Mike, uh, that caused the overrun or the, the estimate? Because normally you're right on or you're a little bit higher. Was there a scope of work that was maybe missed in, in well, the original design? Well, some of it was we, uh, we only had two bidders on it. We might have saved a few thousand dollars had we had some, a couple more bidders. Uh, one of them, there was a communication issue internally with uh, one, one of the uh, bidders, and then the other one had an emergency. Um, some of it was related to the type of the VAV when I looked at them. Uh, I had looked at one brand and then the brand that was being recommended was of a superior quality. So we considered the going to a less quality VAV unit, but in review of them, the performance on these were uh, outstanding and said, let's just, let's just admit that you know, I didn't look necessarily at the right ones. Uh, Control-wise, we were right within there. It was simply the uh, cost of the VAVs and the labor to install those uh, that I hadn't uh, hit the nail on the head. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Chief Forber said you could sell pencils or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, told him, I told him to sell them. Oh, Mike. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. I think that would be an easier approach, sir, than asking Karen to come out of the job. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Thank you, Mike. Uh, great work. I don't did, did it. I don't know if anyone had any other questions for Mike. Pretty thorough. Yep. I move we award the uh, bid to Lakeshore Plumbing and Heating for the VAV project. Second. Nielsen. Yes. No. Okay. Yes. Sexton. Yes. Polgora. Okay. Johnson. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> 
Okay, next bit is the 2016 through 2018 tree planting program. Excuse me, we're trying something new. Is that right? Oh. So, uh, on October 11, 2016, the city received an open bids for the 2016 City of Alpena tree program. Um, this is the, probably the fifth time in the last three years that we've bid out the trees. Um, either no bids, extremely high bids, um, just um, difficulty getting people to bid on this. Um, after the last time none of the local bidders bid, we called them to find out what's, what's going on and it ranged from your packets to get too much information in it because we have to put all of our specs in to, oh, I forgot about it. Sure. So when we rebid it out for October 11th, <clears throat> um, Shannon out of our office uh, basically held her hand, led them <laughs> along the way, answered the questions um, to get them to bid, and we were able to get um, three bids, two of them local. Um, the three bids received were from MacArthur Construction, Prattscape LLC, and G&J &G Site Solutions. The last one being out of Calumet, Michigan. I mean, that's how far we, we searched for uh, bidders. Um, I'm not gonna run through each tree type, but the low bid from Prattscape uh, provided a price of $250 per tree and that is planted with the guarantee that was spelled out in the specifications. Okay. Over the last several years, and, and <clears throat> this is quite honestly, we, we're this far behind. We've got 700 trees that we've taken out. A lot of, a lot of elms, or uh, ashes, excuse me, that have died. Um, and we've been, like, that's why we've been trying to get bids and uh, to stretch our dollars as far as we can. Um, like I said, bids have been solicited on actually four separate occasions with the current bid opening finally producing interest in the project at a financial amount allowing for a contract to be awarded. The intent of the proposed contract is to award the as-bid prices for both the 2016 and 2017-18 fiscal years as listed above. Um, a five-year extension clause has been included, and we did that because we had such a difficult time getting bidders to begin with, um, for continuation of the contract if both parties can negotiate acceptable prices. <coughs> Funding has been established in the major and local street funds for this project, and uh, what that, we've also got the tree fund, which was uh, money that was donated to the city to establish that tree fund. And we were, every year we were putting money in and to, in anticipation of getting bids, and then at the end of the year we were taking it back out because we weren't spending it. But that, with this, um, the bid that we received and the price that we received, I'll be getting with Karen to do a budget amendment to pull that money out of the tree fund so that we can put it into the major locals, parks, uh, and the cemetery while we've removed a lot of those trees. <coughs> it is my recommendation to city engineer that the project be awarded to Prattscape LLC for the it, for the bid unit prices not to exceed $60,000. The tree planting will occur in the spring and fall of 2017. Is that this fund, that's this fund here that's the tree slash park improvements, it's $99,076 right now. Like, so we, we, we all need to get with Karen on that to do a budget amendment. Okay. I think that's gained a little bit in interest, not a whole lot. But no, not a whole lot. It's not a lot we went through about half of it, and a lot of it was for Starlight. Yeah, that was a that was a separate. Yeah, one that was they allowed us to use some of it for park improvements, so we were fortunate that we had it for that. Who's they? McClay. McClay, McClay Trust. 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 Oh, the, that's oh, the family that's that donated okay. the money. Yeah. I'm catching up. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
there's so many trees. We can't possibly replace 700 trees next year. No. This will cover time. about 240 trees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that way, at least we're, I mean, yeah, okay. we could supplement it with some, nice. with some of our funding for the major local street funds and parks and rec. But, um, you know, we certainly don't have the money out there to do 700 trees. Rich, these, an inch and a quarter, is that the... What is it? How much is it? That's the caliber of the tree. The okay. <coughs> I was just trying, is that smaller? Are we getting smaller and smaller every year, or is there? This is what was recommended to us. Oh, really? By, I mean, we, we went out, we talked to the local landscape company, Spratscape, that is, go look at okay. Greg, because Greg wants a four-inch tree. No, I, well, I love that. <laughs> no, I, I was always used when I, <coughs> when I was in my landscape architecture days, was that two, two and a half inch were very common. Mm -hmm. And those would be bald and burlap. Well, now those trees are running, you know, I don't know, four or five, six hundred dollars. I see. And so the, they you know you so just can't small. get them. So these are these are probably half the size diameter wise right. than what uh, the biggest concern is not so much the diameter is that do they have at least a somewhat developed head mm -hmm. because it's a lot you get a lot better tree if, if the head has been developed in the nursery than if it's like a whip and right. really it's up to those who plant it then to shape the tree and that's a lot more work. Um, these should have a, a fairly developed head on them, even at an inch and a quarter. Oh, the wind seems to whip the smaller trees pretty significantly, yeah, especially in the winter. They're it's pretty strong. rough. Yeah, everything will be staked. You think? They will be. Yeah, they yeah. Have to I be. hope they hope it does well. And what we'll do is um, the contractor is responsible for the initial watering. And what we do is wherever we, we're going to plant these trees, we send a letter to the property owner telling them care and maintenance. And we work with the, with the, the contractor to develop that letter, you know, how often it should be watered, how much it should be watered, mm -hmm. to uh, help promote the growth of that, of that tree. Thank you, Rich, and thank Shannon as well for her work on that. Well, we award Prattsgate LLC the 2016 Tree Planning Program contract. Second. Noak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Swallowgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Assuming you're staying there for something. <laughs> uh, next up is new business. A is the 2016 CIP contract modification number one. Um, following the award of the 2016 capital improvement uh, program bids, we went to the low bidder at MacArthur Construction and uh, requested pricing for additional work, which was still under design and permitting um, at the time we bid that out. We didn't want to delay those bids uh, while we waited for this. The additional work includes installation of replacement water between Johnson Street and Long Lake Avenue and replacement of the sewer from Johnson Street through the north property line of the Austin Brothers Brewery. The existing sanitary line serving them is deficient and has caused backups to the brewery on a weekly basis. Uh, Mike was again Golinski was again begging me today to get that in as soon as possible because they are out there um, like weekly uh, with backups uh, in that line. Mm -hmm. um, it was anticipated that this, that this situation, the backup, will only get worse as weather gets colder and the systems begin to freeze. The water project will provide a 12-inch water main from Johnson Street up to Long Lake Avenue. Uh, this will provide redundancy and additional flow capabilities to the north area. Um, up in the Palm Street Commerce Drive area, um, we, have the, we have the initial pressure, but because of the flow capabilities, that pressure does drop off as, as the flow is being used. 
with this 12 inch that runs up there, it's replacing a four inch that runs along the tracks. Um, this will provide that additional redundancy and uh, flow capabilities to uh, the north area of the city. Due to the issues with the sanitary sewer in the fast approaching winter, the city is proposing a contract modification to the 2016 CIP contract to facilitate the work. The prices are as follows. The sanitary sewer is $29,350 and the water main is $131,500, total of $160,850. MacArthur Construction has also indicated that they will install the sanitary portion of this project yet this fall, allowing for the Austin Brothers to be connected to the new sewer before winter. Funding has been established in the water and sewer funds with prices for the project below the established budget amounts. It is my recommendation as city engineer to execute a contract modification with MacArthur Construction for the bid unit prices totaling $160,850 for the utility extension from Johnson Street to Long Lake Avenue. And just as an aside, we've also been in discussion with the MDEQ who will be doing some work up in there. Um, part of the, the getting the sanitary sewer in, in lying in is not going to be a, as big of an issue. We've, there's some contamination out there that the DEQ will be removing. Uh, our proposed sanitary line kind of maneuvers between all those. There's one small area that we'll go that we'll have to go through, and uh, they will have folks on site when we when we're digging that uh, to monitor it. The water main would have traveled through um, some additional areas, so the water will either delay that till spring or the DEQ gets in here, which they're planning to about November 1st. Uh, if they get that cleaned up, then we could continue with the water main this fall. But it's kind of a work in progress and working with the DEQ on that, on that uh, installation. <coughs> Excellent. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> Brought it up a few times. We've talked about this before. So. Take action on that. Okay. I move we uh, execute a contract modification with MacArthur Construction for the bid unit price of one hundred sixty thousand eight fifty for the utility extension. Second. Sexton. Yes. Walagora. Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. yes. Nowak? Yes. Sorry. Answering for Nielsen as well. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she was she was gonna give you a yes. <laughs> Thank you. I get more unsolicited help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, next night, I think. <laughs> Revisions to council policy statement number seven, tobacco use. Good evening. Good evening. Karen should have given you a revision. Uh, we found a couple things that really just needed to clarify and then consistency throughout the document. I assume you all have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, several months ago, some concerns were brought to the manager's office, and Greg and I sat down and we talked about those concerns. <clears throat> And then he spent a great deal of time on the manager's listserv to see what other communities did as far as tobacco use and also uh, smokeless cigarette use. Uh, things varied all over the place, to tell you the truth. Uh, we found that we probably didn't address everything that we should when we put this into place in, I believe, 2010. I didn't bring my copy up with me. I apologize. Um, but uh, then I did some additional research within our community and uh, realized through that as well that we probably weren't doing <coughs> as much as we should be doing with this particular policy. Uh, so we tried to be fair and take what other communities and other businesses in our area were doing and also stay within Michigan law and then we also took the city's wellness initiative, which is relatively new, into account to try to incorporate that somewhat into the policy. Um, this is not going to come without resistance, and we know that. But it is not a personal attack on anyone. It is really what we feel is in the best interest of the city and the employees. Um, 
So we are going to work with the staff and the department heads to implement this to make sure that receptacles are used <coughs> appropriately and uh, try to make it a very smooth transition so that we can make adjustments and make sure that this happens timely as well as appropriately with uh, people's feelings in mind. Um, so it is my recommendation to council to accept the changes that are indicated on CPS number seven, unless you have any questions or concerns otherwise. Can you briefly um, maybe explain why you included smoke with cigarettes, like e-cigarettes, as part of the policy? Because I know a lot of institutions are hips and no tobacco, and then they run into that issue with, with the, like e-cigarettes. That is absolutely correct. It is the e-cigarettes that um, it is a concern for us, and I don't know if there's if that's actually the brand name. I'm not well, familiar with these, either. but that's exactly the things. And I think that part of it is that. The research, depends what you listen to, but there is research indicating that some of the vapors are not necessarily healthy because I think it's still being developed. And so just to be sure that we were creating a safe environment as well, we included that in there. It doesn't mean that at some point in time we can't visit this again, but right now it just seemed like the right thing to do for safety and wellness. And what what is your suggestion to, to staff as far as enforcement goes? Well, I think for the biggest part, uh, for some of the concerns that Greg and I heard were that as you walked into a doorway, mm -hmm. that the receptacles were right next to the doorway. Mm -hmm. And so our staff maybe is not doing anything to uh, harm anyone else but we were negligent in not putting those receptacles where they were people did not have to walk through them on a regular basis so that's one thing that we know that we can correct um, as far as tobacco that is not smoked but chewed or whatever you know the, the little baggies and such um, not everybody is actually using a receptacle to put those away so we need to be sure that we pick up after ourselves at our ages we all should so um, that's something that we really need to uh, I guess hammer home and make sure that everybody <coughs> does their part in cleaning up after themselves and not leave, leaving things laying around yeah. and such so those are the things that we really need to educate people that we don't all need to see those type of things did I answer that sure okay <laughs> good thanks <laughs> please educate people that cigarette butts are littered too that's right absolutely Thank you. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Not for me. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we need a motion. Yeah, if you're going to take action on that, yeah. anyone? I move we approve <laughs> revision to CPS 7, tobacco use as presented. Second. Walgore? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? <laughs> yes. You gotta wait for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's Kathy. And uh, next up, C is the backup server sharing agreement with the County of Alpena. Good evening, Steve. Oh. Back in 2010, the city partnered with Alpena County to change over from an antiquated tape backup system to a, a NAS-based system, which is network cache storage, um, to protect us from data loss or corruption. Um, the system has worked well for many years, um, but with the, with the implementation of uh, many new BSNA databases and the ability to add pictures and different reports and things to these databases, um, along with uh, increasing need for security camera video footage and uh, police car video footage um, we just our, our size the size of the server just isn't enough anymore um, the the current backup can the current system can back up all of our existing data without issue but the space available affects the time that we can keep each of these backups and how many full backups we can keep on file um, we've had a situation over the past 12 months or so, uh, quite a few times where files that are only used for quarterly or yearly reporting aren't looked at <coughs> for long, and then when you go back to them, if something has happened to them, they're not in the backup sequence anymore because they've been overwritten. 
we have about a 90 day uh, backup system right now um, so we'd like to like to lengthen that out if we could um, the county kind of demonstrated these same needs and um, they went ahead and solicited quotes for larger devices and uh, Eric Vander suggested that we employ a similar NAS sharing agreement um, with them again and he, he needed to buy these things uh, fairly quickly so he ended up advertising for them and getting them near the end of the city's fiscal year and he told us he's just gonna you know get us online and then when we can get into the next budget year and pay for these things uh, he, he uh, suggested we just do that and the county just recently approved the attached uh, NAS sharing agreement and the pricing split and it's my recommendation as IT coordinator that the that City Council approve the super micro NAS sharing agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute it on the behalf of the city uh, this purchase is really considered new technology because we're supporting we're supporting new things that we didn't have uh, back when the first backup system went into place, and uh, it's uh, it's typically programmed into durable goods. So what I'll have to do is move that durable good money into uh, capital purchases. And that's what I intend to do, and there's sufficient funds to do that. Um, the agreement itself, um, I thought I emailed it over to Bill earlier last week, and it didn't get there, so he got it today. I would just wait for his his approval on the agreement itself, and then we'll go ahead and, and get it signed and, and get it into place. So. He'll read it tonight before he goes to bed. I figured he'd read it between. Well. You know. I actually read it at dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good with it if okay. you guys are good with it. Okay. okay great. Yeah. Thank you. So, wow. Steve, you've been very happy with our relationship. I have, yeah. Okay. yeah it's worked out really well. Yep. I'm very happy. So if we take action on this, you you're ready to purchase, make your purchase, and start backing up. Yeah, we oh, I mean, that's already all, are. That's all. Yeah. It was just it was needed. It was just so okay, right? We're just gonna pay our share. It's gonna pay your share. Yeah. That makes so, sense. I'm sure we we figured out something, or we would rent the things from them. But um, I think we just need to purchase it and be done with it. But it's a, it's been a nice setup for us. You know, we, we each have a, a system, and we partition it in half, and we back up their backup, and they back up our backup, and they're in separate locations. It's just, it's ideally, it's, it's the way it should be. So. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. I move we approve the Super Micro NAS sharing agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute it on the city's behalf. Second. <coughs> Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walagora? Aye. Aye. I move you here. Second. You are watching All About Alpino.